today, I have a question for you. Did you know that you deserve me time? Did you know that? That you, you listening, you deserve some me time. Guys and girls. Whoever me is, whoever you are, you deserve some time for yourself. So we're going to be diving into that today. And as you can tell, I'm in another location because I'm currently traveling through Italy. I am in Tuscany in a very small town called Colle di Val d'Elsa. It's very hard to say fast, but that's the small town I'm in. I'm in this really cute Airbnb. I might throw in a little video, but like in front of me, there's just a giant stone wall and like this hidden bathroom over there. And the kitchen is right here. So it's very interesting. Like this headboard is the kitchen wall. So I love it. And I've always wanted to hold the mic. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Cause I am one to talk with my hands. So if I start throwing the mic around, just don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> but yeah. And I've, I love the idea of doing a podcast just in bed. I didn't want to do it at a table today. You know, I wanted to switch things up. I'm holding the mic and I'm in bed t- today. And we love that. We love it so much. And it feels so weird, like holding this. I feel like I'm like, I don't know, whenever somebody hands you a mic, it's like very like, all right, you're on the spot. So I feel kind of weird right now. Not gonna lie. But we're just embracing it. <laughs> Cause I wanted I wanted to do this. I put myself in this position. But also because I don't really know where I would set the mic if I'm recording in bed. So this is where we're at. You know, this also gets me more comfortable with just feeling like I'm on the spot. Cause like if I'm not holding the mic, it's less of that feeling. Now that I'm holding the mic, I feel like I'm on stage, even though it's just me and a phone and the mic. Nobody's here. It's just me. But anyways, (laughs) today I want to talk about just how important it is to give yourself that time to just be with yourself and to love yourself because since being on this trip and for months before that I've just really been feeling like I need to get in a different situation or I just need to be by myself so I can feel okay but I've been realizing that where those feelings and where those desires are actually coming from is just a lack of me time and a lack of love for myself, which is crazy to hear because I'm always preaching about self-love, but you know, I preach it because it's something that I am still building up every single day, which... I don't know if I'll ever get fully like maxed out on like, I can't love myself anymore because I'm always growing and I'm always changing. And you know, there's beauty in that. And I love that. I don't want to like max out on that. Cause like, there's always new things to discover about myself, but I've just been noticing that, you know, I need some me time. And I'm saying this from a space of I'm with my boyfriend 24-7. Like, so the alone time is not really there unless I'm recording an episode and I tell him to go to a cafe for an hour or two. (laughs) But even then, like, yes, this is my time. I'm by myself, but 
y'all are watching. <laughs> Maybe not in this exact moment when I'm recording it, but this isn't that proper me time, you know? And it's something that we've had a conversation about. And I want to put this out there. Like, anything I talk about in my relationship, I have already had that conversation with him. So it's not like I'm just... He's going to listen to it on here and be like, oh, that's how she's feeling. We talk about everything. Communication is so important. And especially if, if you're with somebody all the time. Like, if you're not communicating, you're going to start resenting, resenting each other. And I noticed a little bit of those feelings lately. They've been there because we've been living together for... A few months now, we moved in together in November, and it wasn't like a situation where, like, you know, I think it's time to move in together. We should we should plan this out. It just kind of happened. You know, a sit my living situation kind of went. <clears throat> so I was like, hey, can I can I come to stay with you? And that's how we moved in together. <laughs> But since then, we've been together, like, 24-7. And I'm just, we're both really recognizing how important it is, which we knew this already, but being in a relationship like that, it is so important to have things for yourself that the other person is not a part of. And regardless of if you're in a relationship or not, when, when you're single, it's so important to have things that other people are not a part of. That's your me time. Because, you know, this is, we just hit 10 months in our relationship. But before that, like, this is going on to be my longest relationship since, like, eighth grade. I have not been a long-term relationship person before. So it's very, very interesting. And personally for me, I always had the habits and the patterns to just indulge myself in their lives. And it would get to the point where I would just completely lose myself, where I felt like the only way to move forward was to just cut them off completely. And that's how my past relationships went. <laughs> I got so lost in the relationship that I lost myself. I lost my individuality. I lost my vision for myself solely. That I just was like, all right, I can't stand to be around you anymore. But in reality, I just wasn't giving myself that space or them that space to just be a individual. So... That's one thing I, like, I don't want that anymore. I I straight up went to him. I was just like, I don't want to hate you. I don't want to resent you. I don't want it to get to this point where I just feel like I can't even be around you. And he feels the exact same way. And that's where that communication comes in. But it is so, so important. And I've mentioned this before, but... I picked up this belief <clears throat> when I was younger that I'm not capable of having a healthy relationship and being a stable and independent woman. I couldn't have both. And so being in this situation, I'm trying to teach myself how to have both because I'm like, I know I'm capable just because I wasn't shown other options growing up doesn't mean I can't create those options for myself now because I'm capable of anything I am limitless so I'm not going to give in to the fears of I need to really distance myself just to be okay like how can I create that space right now in this environment without giving into the old patterns or the old fears and just having my own thing, you know, being my own person, having that love for myself 
regardless of the way he loves me. Because I know he loves me. And I love our relationship. But I gotta have that love for myself. Because one another thing that I've been realizing that I've been doing is there has been a lack of self-love, which has resulted in me almost blocking all the love that he wants to give me. So I haven't been allowing him to love me fully because I haven't been loving me fully, which is so crazy. But it's so real to just have me time so you can observe these things within yourself and become aware of what's actually going on. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I blocking him from loving me fully? Why do I feel like I can't stand to be around him? Why is his chewing annoying me right now? (laughs) You know, because it gets to that point, especially like if you are married and I have been feeling like I'm in a married relationship right now and I'm just I don't like it (laughs) not I love I love marriage it's a beautiful thing but like I don't want that for myself right now and I that's how I've been feeling in the sense of you know we're in a full-blown partnership we're with each other all the time we're making decisions together so that's basically what a marriage is you know minus the kids I'm not having kids right now either. I don't want that. (laughs) I'm 21 years old. (laughs) And for the people who are 21 or younger, you know, if you have kids, I love that for you. Be a good mom or dad. That's all that matters. Love yourself and love them. You know, there's no shame. There's no judgment. That's just not what I want for myself right now. I want to pull a Rihanna, become a billionaire first, and then start having some babies. (laughs) That's what I see for me. But it is just so, so, so important to create that space and to have designated me time. And what that's been looking like for me. So last year, I was at a point where my gym routine was just phenomenal. I would wake up and I'd go to the gym for like at least two hours. I would go in, I would stretch, I would do the stair climber for like 20 or 30 minutes. I'd do whatever workout I wanted. And I'm a big, like, I'm not a weightlifter. I like body weight or cardio or HIIT workouts, just any type of circuit I could do to just work up a sweat. Like I could get a full workout in in like 40 minutes. And then I would go do yoga and then I'd go sit in the sauna for like 30 minutes. And then I'd go home and that'd be my morning. But around September, October last year, that kind of started slipping away, which is okay. Because my body needed it, honestly. Because I was working out so consistently, but I wasn't feeling the absolute best every time that I worked out. And that was whenever my gym routine started to slip, that's whenever I went through a lot of emotional healing and just a lot of tension release in my body and just freeing my hips because they were so tight like specific workouts they would just hurt to do and I feel like I couldn't have proper form because my hips were so tight or same with like my shoulders or my back so you know some I could look at it from the viewpoint of oh wow I got off my routine like I need to get back to that what did I do that for but I'm choosing to look at it as okay, maybe my body needed this. And now whenever I work out, it feels a lot better. And in the long term, I have plenty of time to work out. You know, tomorrow's not promised, but there's no need to hurt my body because I am so young. If I hurt my body now, like 
if it doesn't recover, that's going to be with me for 50, 60 years or more. And I don't want that. So I just, I took that and I was just like, okay, I'll just listen to my body. And I just went through a lot of emotional healing and I started doing a lot of traveling. And that's when I started my podcast too. So I dove more into the mental and emotional side of myself and less on the physical because when I was going to the gym consistently like that, I was not fully healing the emotional side of my life, which was much needed, but it all happens the way it's supposed to. But the point is where I'm going with this is my routine started to slip. It completely was gone, honestly. (laughs) And ever since that I've started traveling in Italy, it's, it's getting back to it because I'm being forced to walk everywhere because we don't have a car. And yeah, you can take a bus or take a train, but like, who doesn't want to walk around Rome? It's so beautiful. And you get to see everything and just experiences. Like, I wish the U.S. was more walkable, specifically Phoenix, where I was living. Like, I wish... It was more catered to you just being able to walk everywhere. But it's like, you're more likely to get hit by a car out there than you are here. (laughs) Even though the drivers out here are kind of crazy, but they are out there too. But I wish that it was a lot more walkable because people would be a lot healthier and they'd be outside more. And there's so many benefits to that. So the U.S., you should look into that. But anyways, (laughs) since I've been out here, just being able to get out and walk around all the time has really just, it's allowed me to slowly get back into that, to get back into that routine, to get back into that physical love for myself. And I have just recently started, I'm on like day six or seven of my friend Jonah Downey's 45 Simple Challenge. And I have mentioned this in a couple episodes, but it's basically the 75 hard, but more realistic. I tried the 75 hard last year. I lasted day three. It was not, it was not suitable for me. (laughs) If you want to do the 75 hard, that's fucking phenomenal. I love that. But I just, maybe one day I'll do it. But that's not right now. So I'm doing the 45 simple because I'm just trying to build that routine for myself, have more me time. So what that routine is, is just it's allowing me to get back into working out and moving my body intentionally and with love and with purpose. It's just The whole challenge is just 10 minutes of workout a day plus meditation and eating protein with every meal and writing what you're grateful for every single day. And the majority of those are something that I already do, but the working out was something that I had let slip away. So I'm really loving this challenge because it's 10 minutes of whatever you want. Like it doesn't have to be a specific workout. And he gives you workouts but so shout out to Jonah for that because I really love it and that is just one thing that I have been doing for more me time you know I may not be alone when I'm doing it but I'm still giving myself that space to be like okay this is my time to work out this is my time to connect with my body I don't care what he's doing. This is me time. He doesn't care what I'm doing either because it's his me time. (laughs) You know, it's all about like we both want that for ourselves. It's just about communicating it. So whether you're in a relationship or whether it's your family or your friends, communicate your needs because I almost can guarantee that they are feeling the same. Everybody needs a long time. Everybody needs 
a practice or a routine that they have simply for themselves to connect with themselves and to be with themselves. So just having that space, creating that space for yourself, whatever that looks like for you, it is so important. And ever since we've had that conversation, I feel like it's just lifted a weight off my shoulders because I wasn't just keeping those feelings within because I was so worried like I would have a talk with Sophia before I even talked to him about it and I would just be so worried because I'm like I don't know how he's going to react and then we had the conversation and he was feeling the exact same way and it was really beneficial that we had that conversation because we both got to just release that energy so please communicate with the people in your life lives. <laughs> it it's so healing and it's so freeing and it's crucial for everything. Just being honest with what you need. Because by you doing that, it creates the space for others to do the same. You are giving them permission to also be honest with their needs. Or with what they want. By doing that for yourself. So. I I know. It's a lot easier said than done. Because I used to be a person. That would never communicate my needs. And I would just. Wait until I actually was alone. To try to have that time for myself. But. If you don't have that option. If you're not living by yourself, or if you don't have somebody who works all the time, like we both work from home. So when I say we're with each other 24 seven, I mean it. <laughs> like, and I love it. It's so fun. I'm really grateful for it, but it's not healthy to not have individual routines, even if you are living together. You have to have your own routine. You have to have your me time. And if you can't actually like get away, which I'm sure you can, somebody can go somewhere or just go outside, boom, you're away from them. <laughs> or if you just need to go sit in the bathroom. I used to do this a lot when I was younger. My, the bathroom was like my safe space because I was like, ah. Oh, alone time, just me in the mirror. And I would just sit there and I'd talk to myself all the time, or I would just look at myself, or I would put on some makeup for no reason. You know, whatever it is. It's just simply about creating, this kind of hurts my wrist, but <laughs> it's just about giving yourself that space because you love yourself enough to do it. You love yourself enough to be honest with what you need. There is nothing more important than that. Don't worry about how other people are going to react to that. Because nine times out of ten, you're projecting your own fears onto what you think they're going to say. Or how you think they're going to react. So just speak your truth. Do not let fear stop you from getting what you need or having that space for yourself. Don't let the fears get in the way because the fear doesn't want you to have that space. The fear doesn't want you to be happy. So why give it control? Why give it any power when it does not have your best interest in mind? So forget the fear, forget what you think people might say, who cares? Who cares truly? Because if those people in your life aren't willing or they're not happy to give you space for what you really need, maybe you should rethink them being in your lives. Because if somebody loves you and they love themselves, they'll want that for you because they want that for themselves. And it's so, so important to 
just be honest, speak, communicate. You have a voice for a reason. Use it from the heart, from the soul. You have a heart for a reason. You have a soul for a reason. You have a voice for a reason. They all go together. The soul tells your heart, your heart feels it, and your voice communicates it. So use that. That is your power. One of your powers. It is a gift. Your voice is a gift. Your heart and your soul, it is a gift. What they need, you deserve to communicate that. You deserve to tell people what you want. You deserve to get what you want. You deserve to get what you need. Whatever that is for you. No matter what other people say or no matter what you think they're going to say, communicate it. Because it'll just make everything so much better. It really will. I promise. But just, it might be hard, especially if you've never been one to really communicate what you need or never been one to communicate how you honestly feel. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but I bet you it's a little harder keeping that inside because it was for me. It just slowly eats away at you, and then you start to resent the people around you because you're simply just not being honest with yourself and communicating that. So communicate it. Communicate that because you deserve it. And I'm going to drink my hot tea because I have a big problem with making hot tea and letting it get cold. (laughs) And it's a full glass. It's really good. It's some like ginger, mango, tea, something else in it. It's good. And it's already getting cold. It's almost a full glass. You see what I mean? (laughs) But let me just. (sighs) You know, but the one thing I love about hot tea, you can just add more hot water. Which I'll probably do soon. Probably after this, because I'm not going to get up. But. What are some things that you could do for me time? There's so many things. There are truly just so many things that that you could do for yourself. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to cost money. (coughs) Don't chug hot tea. (laughs) Don't chug warm tea. It was not hot anywhere. Yeah. But... (laughs) There are so many things that you can do for yourself at home, wherever you're at. Go on a walk. Me time. Go read a book. Me time. Go work out for 10 minutes. Me time. Go take a nap. Me time. Go cook a meal. Me time. So many things. So many, so many things. Go journal. It's me time. Write yourself a love letter. I love writing myself love letters. And I want to I wanna get into that. Because last year, for like a month straight, I feel like. Maybe not that long. Oh, I wish it was that long. But I'm going to get back to it. I was writing myself a love letter every single day. Just like a page, maybe not even a full page sometimes, but just giving myself that space to love myself on paper, writing it out, and then I read it back, and then maybe I'd write some more. It may sound silly, but it's very beneficial because I stopped doing that, and I have been lacking the self-love, you know, uh, but... That's okay, because it's, you know, it's part of the wave. It's part of the wave of life, the flow of life. 
You're not always going to love yourself to the maximum every single day, and that's okay. But as long as you are able to recognize that and do better the next day. Love yourself a little more the next day and the next day. And it just continues. And then, you know, you're just full of love. And your life just reflects that. Because if you... I'll never forget this. (laughs) When I first moved to Arizona and I was starting like to really dive into this self-transformation journey, self-healing journey. I was reading self-development books. <laughs> I, I was just journaling one day and I was just sitting with myself because I do this a lot. <laughs> and I wrote, <laughs> oh, I want to read it. But I was just like, <laughs> I have found the key to success. It's loving yourself. It is simply just loving yourself unconditionally. That means without conditions. Loving yourself unconditionally. Regardless of literally fucking anything. Just love yourself. Because like, what else are you here to do? Other people are gonna love you more the more you love yourself. You're going to love other people more the more you love yourself. Life is going to reflect the love that you have for yourself. So might as well make it a lot. Might as well fill your cup up of love every day. What else do you have to do? You know, you can sit here and you can be hard on yourself and you can wish for things to be better. But the only way they're actually going to get better is by you loving yourself. It may be the key to success, but it's also the key to life. It's the key to living a happy life. It's the key to having a good view of yourself. It's the key to having healthy relationships. It all comes back to self-love. And how you start to build that self-love for yourself. Me time. (laughs) Being with yourself. Getting alone with yourself. Doing kind things for yourself. It's self-love that is literally the key to life. It's just loving yourself. Because, like, the worst fucking things could happen to you. Somebody could steal your car, break into your house, your dog dies. And then you can just fall into this dark hole of self-pity and why me? Why me? Or you can just be like, you know what? Those are some pretty shitty things, but at least I love myself and I know I'm going to get through this and I know that better days are coming. And those are some pretty dark examples, but I just wanted to, you know, (laughs) show you like, regardless of what happens, it could be the worst things. Of course, giving yourself that time to grieve, especially if your dog dies. You know, that that's sad. Allow yourself to cry. That is also self-love. Allowing yourself to feel your feelings. Allowing yourself to cry. To be like, damn, my dog just died. I'm going to go cry for the next two days. That's a form of self-love. As long as you don't stay down. As long as you are able to cry it out and pick yourself back up. That's the self-love. That love will get you through anything. Anything. Absolutely anything. So just love yourself. Through any inconvenience. Through any traumatic situation. Through any hardship. Through any happy phase. Through any accomplishments. Just love yourself. Because it's, it's on both ends, like the people who are struggling and the people who are really succeeding, there's people on both sides that are still lacking that self-love. And it just shows in different ways. The people who are struggling, they continue to struggle. 
because they're lacking that self-love. And I'm not saying that that's the core cause of it, but it could be, you know, it doesn't hurt to check into that. You know, maybe th- is this happening because I'm not loving myself? Ask yourself that question. And then you have the other side of, oh, I'm succeeding. I'm achieving results. But like, damn, I could be doing better. Why is this not enough? Why am I not enough? How can I do more? You need to love yourself because you're doing fucking great. You're doing so much. You are doing amazing. You are impacting and inspiring so many people. Love yourself. Give yourself some me time. You know, that's not a candle, but that's a candle. Go light a candle. Lay in your bed and stare at the ceiling and just sit with your thoughts. Go paint. There's so, so many ways. If you're, go play some video games. Like, it's literally just, like it's, it's, it explains itself. Me time. Time with me, yourself. (laughs) You need it. We all need it. It looks different for everybody, but you need it. And there's always space for it. Like I said before, communicate what you need. Communicate that you need it. Because we're all aware that everybody needs it. It's just those who are willing to communicate it and those that aren't. So be one that who is willing. Because you'll be happier. And you'll have more love for yourself. Because communication is also a form of self-love. Communicating your needs. Communicating what you want. That is a big form of self-love. I'd say, honestly, that's one of the biggest. Being able to go up to somebody and be like, hey, I need this for myself. It may not align with what you need. Or it may impact you in this way. But I need it for myself. So I'm going to do it. That is a major form of self-love. And like I said before, those around you who love themselves and love you will want that for you. So sit with that and just feel into that because it's so important. You know, like you're literally capable of anything. You deserve to love yourself. You deserve to have some me time. And everything is so much easier said than done. But a lot of people will continue to put others' needs before their own. That is not a form of self-love. Yes, you are, it is okay to do that as long as you are still giving yourself some of that energy at some point, every day, hopefully. You know, if you miss a day, that's all right. But don't continue to just give and give and give or help and help and help if you're not even doing that for yourself. Somebody's got to fill your cup. That somebody is you. You know? Like, it's, it's amazing to be of service. It's amazing to care for others. But I promise you, you will always be able to care or be of service to others better if you're doing that for yourself first. Because then you have more to give. You're not coming from a state of, damn, I wish somebody would give this much to me. You give that much to you. And then somebody will want to give that to you. Because they'll be like, damn, look how much she gives herself. I want to give her more. You're just creating permission for other people to also give that much to you. 
it's the same thing with just loving and communicating anything. The more you do for yourself, the more you are creating permission for other people to also do that for you or to do that for themselves. So if you keep being of service, but know that you will always be of better service when you serve yourself first. Or you will always love better when you love yourself first. You will always take care of others better, whether that's your kids, whether that's your teammates, or your team, or your co-workers, or your employees, or your friends, or your partners. You will always be able to care for them better when you care for yourself first. It's not selfish to put yourself first. It is actually, at the end of the day, more beneficial for everybody if you come first, always. Because if you are prioritizing your mind and your capabilities and your love and your needs, like I keep saying, it just gives everybody else permission to do the same. And it also sets a standard. It sets a standard. If you are loving yourself so much, anybody who tries to come into your life, they're going to be like, well, damn, that's that's a high standard. How can I love her more than she already loves herself? You know, and that's something I want to touch on with. If you're not in a relationship, it is so important to still give that love to yourself regardless of relationships at all. It is so important to give that love to yourself. And if you want that special somebody, that's how you find them, is by just loving yourself, setting that standard for how you would even want them to love you. You have to be able to even do that for yourself first. That is so important with relationships, and I feel like a lot of people don't realize that and that's something that I you know it takes time it takes time to get there but it's so important like if you if you're not in a happy relationship right now and you want to be you want a partner you want somebody to be there with you all the time you want somebody to help you with things you want somebody to lean a shoulder on Do you do that for yourself? Do you love yourself that much? Because if you don't, then how is anybody ever going to love you that way? Because you have to teach them how to love you. People don't just get into relationships knowing like, oh, she loves to be loved this way. They know that by seeing how you love yourself. That's how you teach them. It's not about... Going up and being like, okay, I need you to love me this way. I'm going to need this. Please don't do that. (laughs) Yes, communicate your needs. But like, if you are not doing those things for yourself, don't just go tell somebody how they need to love you. Because they're just, they're going to see it as like, okay, she's just needy. She really just needs to have love for herself. And... Yeah, but just (laughs) you have to set that standard. You have to give yourself the me time. You have to give yourself that love. That's how you're going to attract somebody. Because most of the time you align with people who have the same standards. Maybe it's consciously, maybe it's subconsciously. But usually, you align with people who have the same standards. So if your love for yourself is down here, you're most likely going to find somebody whose love for themselves is also down here. And when you put that together, it's really hard to love each other deeply and fully because you barely have any love for yourselves. But if your love for yourself is up here, 
There is no way somebody who loves himself this much could ever be with you. Unless they brought their self-love up here. They have to match you at your level. That's the standard. Never, ever drop your love for yourself just because somebody doesn't know how to love themselves that much. Teach them how to come up here. If you really love them, teach them how to love themselves so they can love you that much. But never, never drop your standards. Never lower that self-love. Because that's how you will just continue to thrive. You know, your standards up here and then somebody's going to see that and they might be like just a little bit lower, just a little bit, not all the way down here. That's a big difference, especially when it comes to self-love. Maybe just a little bit lower and they're going to come in and you're just going to be so set on your standards and your boundaries and just be like, I'm not accepting anything less than this because I do this for myself. And if you're not even willing to give me what I do for myself, why the fuck do I need you? <laughs> you know <laughs> but somebody maybe is just a little bit lower and then you're gonna have those standards and you're gonna be they're gonna see that and they're gonna be like damn let me get on her level i want to love her that much so let me love myself a little bit more so i can give her that much love you loving yourself that much creates permission for anybody who witnesses it for anybody who experiences it. You are creating that permission. So you have, not, you have nothing to lose other than people who probably won't value you. And <laughs> nobody wants that anyway. So you have nothing to lose. <laughs> so just have that standard. And you know, I wanna, I wanna start wrapping this up and I, you know, I think that's, that's my question for today is what is your standard of self-love? Is it down here or is it up here? What standard do you have for your me time, for your self-love, for the love that you give yourself? Where does it fall? If it's down here, I love you and you deserve that love and work on that and if you want a relationship give it that love to yourself first because i guarantee you don't want somebody who loves himself that little either because that's just a lot a whole lot of insecurity and jealousy and problems which you know sometimes we have to go through that to get to up here and that's okay we've all been there Especially the people who are up here. The people who love themselves this much, they've been through some shit. And that's okay. But what are your standards for self-love? What are your standards for yourself? What are your standards for me time? That is my question for you today. And I'm so, so grateful for you for listening. My wrist kind of hurts. You know, but it was fun. I like holding the mic. I'm kind of surprised that I wasn't just over here throwing it around. You know, it's good. The bed's comfy. And we love it. But that is my question for you today. I'm going to go put some more hot water in my tea and actually drink it. But thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it inspires you to raise those standards and give yourself that me time and give yourself that love and just, you know, because you deserve it. You really do. You deserve it. But thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please come back every Thursday for many more gems just like this one. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. But thank you for listening to The Magical Lane. See you next Thursday. Ciao. <laughs>